Dorothy. Um, I'm uh, very gratified. I, I wanted to start with uh, Ms. Guy. Um, very important um, presentation that you made, particularly uh, indicating that Canadians have wait, wait the longest for care. In, uh, in, for, for social workers, access to social workers. I uh, last year visited a community called Laloche in northern Saskatchewan that has lived uh, a lot of tragedy and trauma. And the, the government had committed to increasing the number of social workers that they have in Laloche, but they still have just one uh, very overloaded uh, social worker trying to handle the needs of a community that needs many, many more, uh, more support uh, from social workers. I'm wondering to what extent you've evaluated the shortage of the number of social workers that are actually needed in this country and what other measures you might uh, suggest to addressing that. Uh, Lalash is just one community where the shortage is very, very apparent and uh, some of the recommendations you're making obviously would address that. Thank you very much for the question. Um, what I'll say is that we initiated this large-scale study that we just completed this summer. What was it? It was over a year of, uh, of research. Um, and we found that ac across the country, and yes, acutely in rural and remote regions, but in, in urban areas as well, we found that every single expert we spoke to, as well as the 30, over 3,200 social workers that we surveyed, um, they all said the same thing. They all said, we are suffering under our caseloads. We, our data showed that 75% uh, of them reported that unmanageable workloads were critical issues. 45% um, of them left due to stress or vicarious trauma, which is tied to burnout. And 72% uh, of them said that, like this one social worker in Lalush who can't serve their clients effectively, that administrative responsibilities prevented them from spending adequate time with that one-on-one -on -one time with their clients. So. Um, that's to say that we don't necessarily have the exact data, data on how many. What would help us have that data would be a, a caseload study to show what the ideal ratio would be so we could say, you know how many Lelush needs? Lelush needs five because there's this many people that are needing care. So uh, we need that data. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very compelling case. Would you like to add uh, I would add just th this. The last time there was a sector study when I looked at social work was about 2005, I believe. Uh, and we have, it's not part of this uh, submission, but we have asked and uh, looking for looking at another sector study when it looks at a uh, number of social workers across Canada serving the populations. Uh, so independent of a caseload study, we'd be looking at how many social workers are actually there and actually providing services. Uh, but overwhelmingly, um, over 75% of the social workers surveyed say their caseloads are beyond their ability to be able to manage and we really have no national snapshot or no national standards when it comes to how many children should be on a caseload. We can when it comes to veteran affairs. We know that there are, uh, we can set national standards when it's, I think it's 25 to 1. Uh, we, can, we can do that and I think it's time that we actually start to put children first if we're, uh, we're going to look at how, how to maintain children out of the care. A report just came out of Manitoba today. Okay, I'm actually yeah. going to have to cut you off there. No Thank you because I did want to go to Ms. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Osler, you, you've indicated the shortage in funding. And a few years ago, when the former government uh, cut back on or capped the funding to the health care system, we knew that this would cause problems. The current government has continued that same process, and, and you've been very eloquent in talking about what the impacts have been. Uh, uh, Canadians waiting for care, not getting adequate health care. Uh, to what extent 